Here at the Fields of Green for All office, we decided there was about time I did a Myrtle's rant. Or let's just call it a Myrtle's catch-up. I just want to start off by saying, is the cannabis community is not divided. The cannabis community is going off on social media. Social media is not real life. Social media is a weird thing. It's its own beast. And for sure here, we've been watching what's been going on in all the feeds and, you know, this whole year, I think that there's been things up and down and people calling each other names and this sort of conflict and that sort of conflict. But I think as the cannabis community, we're not divided because those people who are really doing the work are really doing the work because otherwise we wouldn't have made any progress. And we all know that we made some progress by having the bills signed. I don't think that Fields of Green for All was instrumental in having the bills signed at all. It came as much of a surprise to us as it did for anybody else. Um, but really, thank goodness. And those people who didn't want the bill signed, didn't want the bill signed. And we have a democracy, a 30-year-old democracy in South Africa where you are entitled to your opinion. And so are we here at Fields of Green for All. So recently in the last few weeks, we've been tagged in all sorts of stuff and accused of this and that. But you might have noticed if you've been around, certainly if you've been around for the last 14 years, which I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this have been, you will know that Jules and I, and when we were still the Dacher couple, and even before Fields of Green, we always had a policy of not provoking people and not actually commenting and going off and having a whole big thing on social media. We've never, never done that because you know why? Because there's too much work to be done. And all of this noise on social media at the moment, is, it's so distracting. But you know what also, is I can understand why it's happening. Because all those years ago, a good friend of ours who was in the NGO sector, as they call it, said to us, that was before we'd even registered Fields of Green for All as a non-profit company, said to us, are you sure? Are you sure you want to get into this whole thing? Because you know what happens with special interest groups. There's always a special kind of conflict. And, you know, we've been chatting to some members of our community who came to visit this morning and have a cup of coffee. And we are a special interest group. We really are. Um, there's probably anywhere between 10 and 20 million of us. 20 million people who have used or still do use cannabis in South yeah. Africa. Maybe 10 million, maybe 8 million regular users. I don't know. We don't have that data. But there's a lot of us. And there's only, I could probably count, a few dozen people on social media who are having all of these conflicts. So while thinking about what to say on this rant or what to say on this discussion or catch up or whatever we want to call it, I was thinking back to from 2021, Fields of Green for All brought out our South African cannabis crisis points. And there's 10 crisis points. And I thought, well, in the light of what's happened and in the light of all of the drama that's been going on this year, uh, let's revisit those 10 crisis points and see if we've ticked any of them off and see how much pro uh, progress we've made. So I didn't really put these in any particular order, but these crisis points, this first one that I've got here, it says overselling economic benefits while legislating for the criminalization of the existing market. Now this overselling the economic benefits is a really, really important one. And I know that some people disagree with me about this, but if you're going to start going around saying that weed's going to save the world, no it's not. Yes, it is going to help. But overselling the economic benefits has really caused a lot of people particularly since the, the um, uh, Constitutional Court ruling in 2018, a lot of people have jumped on the bandwagon and a lot of people have lost a lot of money. But that is what we call the Great Wash. 
So the Great Wash is where everybody jumped into this big soup of cannabis and all its opportunities and all of its economic benefits and then realized that it's business like anybody else, you know. It's, um, business is not so easy. There's this romantic notion of going into business for yourself and being your own boss, but it's really, really not easy, particularly post-COVID, because that's when we really saw it. I think people were sitting at home during COVID and they were stewing and wondering what people had lost their jobs. They were wondering what they're going to do. They still had to pay the rent and feed the family. They'd always been interested in cannabis. They loved the plant. And so they got into business. Well, I can tell you that there's a lot of cannabis businesses that are doing really nicely. And that doesn't mean that they're openly trading cannabis or they're abusing the Section 21 um, uh, permits that are hand, seem to be handed out willy-nilly for, by SAPRA. We've spoken about those before. So this overselling the economic benefits is, is still super important. If you're going into any sort of a cannabis business, have some caution absolute caution. I think at last count there were something like 80 medical licenses had been issued and maybe four or, four, four or five of those facilities were actually um, were actually exporting was their license allowed them to and the rest of them are flooding our legacy market with their cannabis um, and our, our legacy growers haven't got a market for their cannabis anymore and it's really super complicated. And then we go back to social media and the wrong person gets in the wrong uh, with in, in, gets into business with a, the other wrong person or it's two right people but it's not really a good match and when it comes to business and then it blows up all over social media and when actually if you've made some bad business decisions or if you've made some good business decisions those should be your private decisions and those should stay off of social media you know it really is to be having business spats on social media is most unfortunate although it's not my position to sit here and say to you you can't have spats on social media go for it if you want to but it's very very distracting because yeah we're still being criminalized because remember the trade is still illegal and why must we hear on social media that oh i can facilitate your ca legal cannabis business there's no such thing outside a sapra license um and then that's all over social media this morning you know i'm going to come pay me i don't know how many thousands of rand and i'll facilitate a legal cannabis shop for you no there's no such thing um, you know, these people peddling the Section 21 licenses. There's no such thing. It's an abuse of an existing system. So the criminalization of the existing market is most certainly still something that's very, very real. And we have this legislative vacuum, which is the second uh, uh, crisis point. Where is the ev evidence for this Cannabis for Private Purposes Act? It used to say bill, but now it's an act. And the National Cannabis Master Plan. Where's the can National Cannabis Master Plan? Surely that's why we all gathered at the Pakisa last year, just this time. It was in May. Uh, I think it was 23rd of May last year was the Pakisa. And uh, there were certainly a lot of good things that came out of that. But we still don't have a Cannabis Master Plan. Where is the steering committee that was appointed by the government to steer this master plan? And we know that our government is in an incredible state of flux and tomorrow we're going to get a new government and maybe even a new president. So at the moment, this legislative vacuum is what it is. But there's also a lot of disinformation out there. But more important than the disinformation and the illegality or not legality, more important than that is the fact that stigma and the prohibition of cannabis that goes with the stigma is alive and well. Now, this is something that is attacking every single one of us in the cannabis communities, all around South Africa, around Africa, and around the world. The stigma is alive and well. Prohibition is alive and well. Did you know that in France, you can't even get medical cannabis? In France, a developed country in the middle of Europe. Did you know that? And here back in South Africa, stigma is alive and well. And that's not only amongst the older generation who maybe have grown up under 100 years of prohibition. That's also amongst religious groups. It's amongst all sorts of people, politicians. Who are we going to vote for? That's another crisis point. You know, if... We
we talk about unity, then the unity should be the acknowledgement of the fact that we've got a lot of work to do to dispel the stigma surrounding cannabis and to get rid of prohibition once and for all. But no, we're fighting about who went into business with who and who's accusing who of what. And let me just tell you now, nobody owns the word cannabis, not anywhere in the world. Okay, so just take that. Nobody owns the word cannabis. You know what I'm talking about. So really, if we're going to have this mythical unity, let's just pull back a little bit and let's look at the bigger picture. Let's consider that developing countries like France, it's, a cannabis is still completely prohibited. And then let's come back home and let's look at the stigma that's alive and well. We see it in cheap two-bit publications all the time. Um, you know, now that cannabis is legal, oh, the streets are going to be lined with drug addicts. I mean, well, what is that about? Let's work together to dispel the stigma so that we don't, we can get rid of this legislative vacuum and we can somehow get the word across that we need the evidence to be heard, that we need our regulations that are going to follow the, the signing of the act into law, that these regulations are going to be solid and it'll just have to take however long it's going to take. We still have to get through the Hayes Club case. We still have to get through all the technicalities that have arisen about the Labour Court case. And all of this is stigma. You can't tell me that Barlow World, who, 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 who fired Bernie Enova, that wasn't steeped in stigma, that corporate policy. So instead of fighting with each other on social media, what about looking at the bigger picture and the hurdles that we still have to cross? So that's two crisis points we haven't ticked off yet. And then the third one, licenses and the Dacher Dompas. What's going to happen about this? We do believe that certain permits, not licenses, will be issued and they will go with the regulations around the Cannabis for Private Purposes Bill. So there should be permits available for all different things to do with cannabis. But that is about as specific as, as I can be. What is the license going to be for? Maybe, maybe you're sick and you want to grow 500 plants and you can go and somehow get a license because you need 500 plants to make yourself cannabis oil. I don't know. Nobody knows what these licenses are going to be. Nobody knows who the regulating authority for all of this is. Nobody knows, not even point one on the road to, to cannabis uh, regulations. So we still have... Number three is not ticked off yet because we know you can get a medical license, but those are exclusive and very, very, very expensive to set up a medical facility and all of that. And we still have the Dachadom Pass because every single day people are pulled over in their cars, people are stopped in the streets, people are harassed by the cops. We still have to, this idea of having, having to have a Dachadom Pass is mm, still very much in the air, so not ticked off. Next one. Crisis point number four. Yes, hemp. Well, hemp is legal now, isn't it? Uh, we still have to have the modifications to the Plant Improvement Act. We still have to see how DELRAD, our Department of Ag Agricultural and Rural Land Development, is going to um, cope with this. Uh, we have to see whether hemp is a viable industry in South Africa where in South Africa it's going to be a viable industry. I believe that there's amazing projects that are being spearheaded around the, around the country. I believe that there's money that's available for big hemp projects. But one mustn't forget that there's never, ever, ever has been an industrial cannabis industry in Africa. And that's just a fact. There might have been some domestic use of the cannabis plant for industrial purposes, like maybe for rope or maybe for some, some sort of fiber use or people eating the seeds before it was prohibited and so on and so on. And I think that it was maybe on a domestic level cannabis was used industrially, but we have certainly never used it as an agricultural commodity. So I have to emphasize that there's a hell of a lot to learn, a lot, a lot, a lot. Hemp is not like growing millies. And South Africa is open and willing to learn because now hemp is no, cannabis is no longer in the Drug and, Drugs and Drug Trafficking Act and so now hemp has really become legally an agricultural commodity. But if we're going to grow, um, if we're going to grow hemp, what's happening about these THC levels? I think it's sitting at 
two percent or two point one or some percentages that are not uh, scientific at all, and we believe that there are cultivars around the world that have been developed that have not percent to THC. But are we going to import those seeds? What about our own genetic resources? What about biopiracy? Where did those seeds come from? Do they come from a frankenweed factory in Europe somewhere? Uh, how are they going to affect um, our biodiversity in South Africa? It's a very, very long road to travel. And then also, what about pollen drift? What about cross-pollination and hemp plants? Surely, uh, you can maybe get feminized hemp seeds or something like that, but I can tell you, there's very, very few hemp experts in, in South Africa, but there are many around the world, and I think we're going to have to consult lots of experts before we start getting excited about a hemp industry in South Africa. So, not ticked. Oh, this one, I'm not even going to go into it. Plant counting, not ticked. We don't know what who's going to come and count our plants. We don't know how many plants. We don't know if it's reasonable, if it's ridiculous, if we're going to have to go back to court on this issue. We've got no idea. So plant counting, not ticked. This one is really interesting. What about our history? What are you, you heard me mention the Dacha Dompas, uh, which for those people who are watching outside South Africa, during apartheid, black people had to carry a special pass book, which was called the Dompas, uh, in order to show the white police um, uh, uh, who they were and where they were from. And it was one of the cornerstones of the apartheid regime. So that's why we call it the Dacha Dompas. But we need to be absolutely cognizant of the history of cannabis around the world. Because other countries, particularly in the Southern Hemisphere, are experiencing the same teething problems with their cannabis industry as we are. And I think that one can really go back and learn a lot from the history and learn a lot about preserving our indigenous knowledge systems. And that is why the Cannabis Embassy, together with Fields of Green for All, we had representatives at the um, Gratak Treaty in Geneva last month. And, um, and that treaty was signed to great fanfare by South Africa and our neighbours, Eswatini and Lesotho, Botswana, Namibia, Zimbabwe, they all signed it. So what's to happen now? This is a new treaty that took 10, 20 years to develop. But it shows that the world is starting to recognise indigenous knowledge systems. And then what about our indigenous knowledge systems bill? Have those people who are very concerned with these um, with indigenous issues, have they gone and read that bill? Because I do believe that there, there's some flaws in it too. It's not only the Cannabis for Private Purposes Act that's got flaws in it. The Indigenous Knowledge Systems is also an act that was passed in 2018. It's also flawed. We need to look at that too. So this 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 ignorance of what's going on around the world and the ignorance of the history is certainly holding us back, particularly at a higher level. You know, I always say that the government think that we smoke the leaves. Well, I don't think the government realized the impact of the laws that were passed in South Africa in 1971 and the fact that within the first 18 months of those laws, uh, with the outright ban of Dacha, 76,000 black men were arrested in South Africa by the apartheid regime. And we mustn't forget that. We mustn't forget the Bergville 17, you know, who summarily executed in Pretoria uh, while trying to defend their, their Dacha crops against the, uh, against the apartheid police. So let's not forget about that. So there we go, another one going onto this pile, not ticked. Now, cannabis use is political su suicide. We've just gone through an election, and my, what an exciting time it was, and we might get a new government tomorrow, as I've said. Who are we going to vote for? Are we going to now watch this new government and some new ministers that we are going to get and um, our government of national unity, which will see maybe all the parties uh, represented, um, or it will see all the parties represented, but what are their views going to be around cannabis? We're going to have to re-manoeuvre this whole Thing because we cannot tick off this thing that says can cannabis issues as political suicide because it's not top of the agenda yet and thank goodness we got the bill signed and that it's not sitting there being eaten by termites on, on the president's desk so another not ticked 
Here's one that's really, really close to our hearts here at Fields of Green for All. Drug education for children and youth. Now, we know that the Department of Social Development sent um, people from rehabs in KwaZulu-Natal to pick it outside the court in Pretoria in 2017 when the trial of the plant was on. Uh, in all of these government um, uh, discussions that have been going on, we haven't really been speaking to the government, but you know, we hear things on the periphery. The Department of Social Development is nowhere. And we know that in the ANC manifesto, the only mention of Dacha was under the Department of Social Development, who said that drug use is still harming our society and going on in old bullet 19th century prohibition language. So we are, are we telling the ch children the truth in school? We need to completely overhaul drug education. And, and drug education in schools particularly, what to do about it? There's youth organizations that are very concerned with this. So this one is definitely not ticked. The industry speaking in a vacuum or silos. Now, as I said right in the beginning of the video, I said that there are people doing a lot of work and working very hard in the background. And I can guarantee you they're not anywhere near social media. Fields of Green for All is not speaking to the government. We cannot, we wish, but it's not so easy to get a, a seat at the table. Although we were officially invited to the Pakisa last year, and I must say, even looking back now, I think it was a fantastic, really, really amazing experience. We are not sitting down with the government. We have to maneuver and really make sure that we are acting with an integrity that our information that we put out there is 100% correct, that we're not sowing divisions in the cannabis community, that we are fulfilling the pledge that Jules and I made in 2010, that we were going to try our absolute best for the re-legalization of cannabis in South Africa, for the legal regulation of this, our favorite plant. And we still find, like, where's the Department of Social Development? They weren't at the Pakisa. But we hear a lot from uh, the Department of Trade, Industry and Competition. And we hear a lot from the Agriculture Department. And maybe we'll be hearing something from SARS soon. Who knows? What's going to happen with the taxation? Are they going to, are they going to syntax us? Is this going to happen? So this industry speaking in silos is not ticked, I'm afraid. This last one, actually it's good that it's the last one because the one that really, really gets me wound up. Arrests, incarceration. We do believe that there are still people in jail for Dacha in South Africa. The arrests still happen. Criminal records. The, the Canvas for Private Purposes Act says that there should be a blanket expungement of these criminal records, particularly for possession. Um, but we haven't heard how, because we know if you had to go tomorrow and now you want to have your criminal record expunged, it's going to cost you about 10,000 Rand and it will probably take you at least a year, maybe two years in order to get that right. So criminal records are still very, very much part of our lives. Divorce and custody issues. While we have had a few precedents, but these have been in the family courts and in the magistrates' courts, so we can't hold them up as high court precedents. We still know that various partners who, who have children together hold the cannabis use against the other one, and we know that this is a, a, a terrible invasion of our privacy, and we know that it's legal for us to use and cultivate cannabis at home for ourselves, for our private use, but still, a mother can drag a father or a father can drag a mother to court. They can uh, withhold access to the children. This is an incredibly costly process to fight this all out in the, in the courts. So that's not a tick for divorce and custody issues. And then there's testing at work and school. So testing at work, we really didn't 
sun's just about there, but it might take another year or two to settle all of these labor issues. But at least we know that we do have some of the larger labor federations on our side and that they do, um, they are aware of this. We know that the testing procedures are being updated all the time. We know that South Africa is getting more and more sophisticated when it comes to cannabis actual testing, testing of the product, testing of the human being and their private bodily fluids. But we know the testing at work is definitely still happening. Just the other day we had a case come in through our victim support helpline. And then of course testing at school. I mean, I, I don't know. This is still a huge, huge hurdle to, to a bridge to cross, a hurdle to jump over, one of the two. So this last crisis point number 10, not ticked. So I just hope that through this video, those of you who are having all these spats on social media and making really unreasonable claims and offering services to, to people when those services are not legitimate, to people putting out uh, information that is not correct, to people picking fights with each other on social media. This is what we need to take care of, these 10 crisis points. And do you realize how much work it is? And do you realize how many stakeholders, don't they love that name, have to be involved? At the moment, as I said, we have maybe three, maybe four government departments involved with this. We should have 22 government departments. Go and look at our manifesto. We explain exactly how each government department needs to be involved in this decision-making go uh, process going forward. We, as I said, would certainly love to be speaking to government, but that's not been possible. So it's really not been possible. So don't come and tell me you're speaking to government. If you say you're speaking to government, come and tell me who you spoke to and what the outcome of that was. Because nobody that I know is, is, is speaking to government uh, who is speaking to government actually, actually is making any progress. So be careful of what you read on social media and rather look at these many organizations around the country who are putting out fun, credible, correct, friendly, warm, loving content. Please just, if people are, are cursing, please don't get involved in other people's spats. And we hope to come back to you very soon with an update about Dacher Private Clubs because this video is getting too long. <laughs> but I really just wanted to update you on what's happening with the 10 crisis points and the fact that not one of them has been ticked yet. We've got lots and lots of work to do, ladies and gentlemen. Stop squabbling on social media, pay attention, and let's do the work and get rid of the stigma and let's get rid of prohibition once and for all. And I love you all madly.